Hey guys, Biometer here, and we're back with another episode of Let's Play Dragon Quest IV. Now, on the last episode, we made it to the Azimuth, and in this episode, we're going to head up the stairway to Zenithia. But anyways, if you have Orophila in your party still, I strongly recommend taking her out before entering the tower because only the people in your active party are going to get experience in the tower and like I said before you really don't want anybody from your main party falling behind but uh... anyways this is a pretty long dungeon here and um... I think we got new enemies here actually uh... bullion uh... they're not really any different from other enemies of their type they got the standard fare, two attacks, intimidating roar uh... i don't remember if they have any any new tricks or not but if they do they don't use them too much there's the intimidating scream right there but uh... yeah um... the game says that it's a requirement to have all four pieces of Zenithian equipment to enter this tower, which is the Zenithian sword, the Zenithian armor, the Zenithian helmet, and the Zenithian shield. But I'm not sure if any of that really is a requirement. I'm, I'm fairly certain in the NES version you can actually skip the Zenithian equipment altogether. But I do know that if the hero or heroine is not the lead member in your party, that, uh, it actually will not let you enter. Uh, I believe in this version you actually have to have the sword as a minimum. And in that treasure chest we got a Gombolero, which is actually a really good piece of equipment and we are going to give it to Borea. Um, it has a slight chance of absorbing MP from spells that are cast on the person wearing it. So, I mean, aside from it being, you know, pretty good defensively, I think it also can absorb uh, fire and ice based attacks, but uh, yeah, it's definitely good to have on Borea as his equipment throughout this game has been kind of kind of crappy, except for these awesome pieces at the end, which I mean I guess that's better than you know, just having bull crap the whole way. Um, I didn't have a map when I went through here, so I pretty much explored every outlet making sure I got all the treasures. Luckily, it doesn't send you down too many uh, dead ends, like really long passageways just to be at a dead end with no treasure or anything. And we got another treasure here, a dragon shield. Uh, not really necessary at this point in the game because both Lyra and Ragnar were the only people who, who can equip it have better shields, the Zenithian shield and the Tempest shield respectively, but it's good to sell for money, perhaps go towards getting another piece of uh, liquid metal armor. Uh, you can't fully rotate your camera in this dungeon, you can only do the 45 degree angle like I was doing there. Or, might not have even been... Well, I guess it was 45 degree, but whatever. Uh, these little platforms are elevators. There are some that are... There's at least one somewhere that's just an elevator that goes down for, like, a shortcut. I guess in case you have to leave the tower and come back, but... While the dungeon's long, it's not particularly hard to go through. Um... I mean... I guess my level's appropriate for here, but, you know, I won't be doing any additional grinding before I reach the final areas, so by that point I will be underleveled. Now we got a new enemy here, a hot dog. We haven't seen enemies of this type for a long time, but, uh, unfortunately I didn't let it stick around long enough to actually see what it could do. But, um... Yeah, there's that elevator I was talking about that just goes down, that one right there. Um, eventually we're going to have to go up the ladder over there, though. But first we're going to go over here and get this treasure. 
Nice, another Yggdrasil do. Those will definitely come in handy for, you know, an upcoming boss fight. Hint, hint, spoilers. But, uh, no, there's not a boss in this tower. Um, but there is... There's a boss fight coming up in the next few episodes that we'll definitely want the Yggdrasil do's for. I believe this here is actually the final stretch of the tower. Which... Actually, I got a little confused here. I wasn't sure which way was going to lead to a dead end and which way was going to lead to treasure or in which way was going to lead where I needed to go. Uh, there's a hidden item right there. A mini metal. Nice. I kind of lied in an earlier episode about hidden items. Although, at this point, there's another mini metal there. Nice. At this point, I'm not sure if there's a seat of strength there. At this point, I'm not actually sure if it made it into the episode when I said it. Uh, it might have been one of these episodes where my microphone was off. But I said that there was, like, only two hidden items or something, but I was... Or no, I said there was no hidden items, and then I corrected myself later. Uh, there's a couple. That was one of them. Uh, hidden items and dungeons, I mean. Here we have a new enemy, the Bone Barons. They're not a whole lot different from their uh, weaker counterpoint counterparts that we've encountered earlier. But, and I regret losing this reaction, it can cast Thwack. It came as a complete surprise to me, and it was an awesome reaction. I wish it could have made it into the final cut, but, uh... Yeah, it surprised the heck out of me. It killed two of my party members as I was saying that it can't really do much. <sighs> if only my microphone had been on. I'm actually thinking when I get to recording again that I'm going to use the microphone in my webcam so that I don't have to worry about this happening again. It's also kind of... Uh, kind of sucks having to go back through and doing this commentary again because I I don't really remember what I talked about the first time and I also had to watch these videos in silence before I re-commentate just because I don't really remember what I'm doing at all points like I might make a side stop somewhere and I don't want to just be like my gameplay is just standing there and I'm trying to think of what I'm actually doing and I'm like uh uh at this point we are uh 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 oh yeah we're we're zooming here so I, I'm trying to avoid doing that um this has actually been one of my more lively commentaries surprisingly enough I guess it's just cuz I'm running my mouth you know, with whatever, not really narrating the dungeon. I'm kind of backtracking a lot here. That elevator right there actually went to a dead end, and I thought it was going to be the way that I needed to go. So I ended up having to go backward here a little bit. No big deal. And this was where we needed to go, I believe. Yes, another elevator heading up. Moving on up. And this actually is the final stretch of the tower. And I am... I guess I can go ahead and say it now. I, I do end up getting through this entire tower in one video which kind of surprised me. Uh, there's a plunk bracer in that uh, treasure chest there. Again, I don't advise equipping it unless you plan on actually using it. And we have a new enemy here, Abaldon. Uh, it's either this guy or the Musafer that we encountered earlier that changes colors, but I don't know. I think it's the Musafer because this guy is already red. But uh, yeah, he's not much different from the Musafer. Not really different at all. Go ahead and heal up right there. And we will have to head into the center area up over this bridge thing. After we find another Avaldon. 
they die kind of quick, so I'll leave the battle in here. Actually, that's one of the things I like about uh, Dragon Quest, except for few enemies that are meant to be like highly annoying. The battles actually go pretty quickly, which I mean, you can't say that about a lot of RPGs like uh, Final Fantasy, for example. The battles tend to drag on for a long time. And action RPGs especially, like uh, Kingdom Hearts, battles go on a long time. Not all battles, but I mean, there's some segments in games like that that's just, you know, enemies keep appearing and appearing and appearing. And speaking of enemies that keep appearing and appearing, we got a new enemy here, the Drooling Ghoul. These guys are total jerks. If you remember the Flame Spirits, I don't remember their, their actual name, but uh, Flame Spirits that we encountered in Chapter 2 and at the beginning of Chapter 5 that you would occasionally miss just because they'd like jump out of the way or something and sometimes attacking them would cause them to duplicate themselves these guys do the same thing except their attack is a lot more powerful and they can usually do around 40 damage a hit 40 to 50 depending on who they hit uh, you definitely want to take them out before you work on the picker ears whatever they're called. Yeah, as you can already see, they are highly annoying. And once they're gone, you can celebrate. Yeah, I got the name right. Pickerer. Pickerer? Uh, I don't know. However you want to pronounce that. And we also got another new enemy here, the Curer Slime. But, uh... Yeah, there's not much to say about him. He's just a heal slime that can cast full heal instead of lower level spells. Guess we'll drop another heal right here. And I think we're actually coming up on the last floor very soon. I think. No, I guess there's no treasure over here. Yep, here we are, top floor. And I uh, was looking underneath there to see if there's any treasure, but I couldn't find anything. Anyways, when you step on this panel, cloud will come down. And we will jump on the cloud. Now we are riding on cloud nine. Aw, yeah. And we are going high up into the sky. And this actually explains why we couldn't see anything connecting to Zenithia from our balloon. And speaking of Zenithia, here we are. However, I'm going to end this episode here, so if you like my video, subscribe to my channel. Give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, tell your friends about it, and I will see you guys next time on Dragon Quest Four.